Welcome. What are the design of Sense and Avoid Stairs for the RQ7B Shadow operating under Lost Link? Team members are Francisco Choi, Zach Moore, Sam Mogdock, and myself, Jonathan Pearson. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Andrew Latcher, from the Mighty Corporation, who was instrumental in helping us develop and progress through this project. I'd like to, depict, like to describe this uh, depiction on our front page here, which is a brief overview of what an unmanned aircraft system is. It shows the UAS flying in the top, connected by a satellite link or through direct... Um, direct line of sight to the ground state ground control station where the pilot is located because the pilot is not located on the on the aircraft the main benefit but also the main drawback of the UAS there's certain vulnerabilities that come into play the main one is that the command and control link the link by which the ground control station and the pilot there communicates with the UAS and sends directions can often be severed whether this is due to inclement weather radio interference or many other um, strange anomalies when this is severed, the UAS has to rely on its onboard sensors and pre-programmed procedures to perform collision avoidance. And this, this means that no classic C and avoid uh, can be performed to avoid other air traffic in the air. This lack of sense and avoid um, capabilities at the level of C and avoid presents some, some issues that the FAA must face before integration can occur. So first, what is an unmanned aircraft system? It's the unmanned aircraft and all the associated support equipment, control station, data links, telemetry, communications, and navigation equipment, and many other things are all necessary to operate the unmanned aircraft. As you can see in the table here, UAS are broken into five groups or categories. I'd like to point you to the fourth group, the highlighted group, um, where the operational altitude of UAS in this group is less than 5,000 feet and an airspeed of less than 100 knots. They're typically equipped with an electro-optic infrared or EOIR sensor, which we'll be discussing further in a moment. Um, of note is that there are numerous UAS as part of this group, but we have chosen as focus the RQ-7B Shadow, which will also be gone into further detail in later slides. Since, 2000, since 1996, UAS have continued to increase in flight hours uh, per year. We, by taking uh, data since, since er, until 2010, we've projected that at, by the end of the fiscal year 2013, UAS will account for over a, a million flight hours just in groups three through five. In addition, the Federal Aviation Administration has set a target level of safety, or TLS, of 10 to the negative seven collisions per flight hour. This means that they're, they require less than one in every 10 million, or one accident in every 10 million flight hours. As UAS flight hours continue to increase, this level of safety cannot be compromised. And until this level of safety is confirmed or assured, it is, there is difficulty, the FAA faces difficulty in integrating UAS into the national airspace. I'd like to go over a few of the main issues or differences between manned and unmanned aircraft systems. First, of course, is the largest difference, and that is the pilot's location. In a manned aircraft, they're on board, on unmanned aircraft at the ground control station. The main differences here are that because the manned aircraft has a pilot on board, they can perform collision avoidance through visual scans through, a, through an entire system that are commonly called see and avoid. And if the, an avoidance maneuver is required, they can do so through direct pilot command. In an unmanned aircraft system, however, even when, a link is, uh, when the link is good, it must rely on sensors to perform collision sensing or collision avoidance and determine if a sense and avoid maneuver is possibly necessary. When this link is severed, this all has to be done automatically, and all the avoidance maneuvers and decisions to lead up to that must be performed through pre-programmed procedures. All this comprises the Sense and Avoid, or SAA, system of the unmanned aircraft system. So I'd like to break into more of what Sense and Avoid is. The FAA defines Sense and Avoid as the capability of the UAS to remain well clear and avoid collisions with other airborne traffic. It's broken down into eight main subsystems. The first four, Detect, Track, Evaluate, and Prioritize, loosely comprise the sense half of sense and avoid, while the last four, declare threat, determine action, command, and execute, comprise the avoid half. I'd like to step you through these four very quickly. First, the UAS detects passively through its electro-optic infrared sensor whether there is a, an aircraft in its area um, near it. Then it tracks its position and evaluates whether that uh, its trajectory and the UAS's current trajectory might pose a risk. Then it prioritizes multiple threats if they exist, declares a threat, and determines an action necessary to avoid it, commands and executes that maneuver. This brings us to our problem and need statement. 
Currently, UAS sensors on board do not perform at the level necessary to ensure the target level of safety of 10 to the negative 7 is met while operating under a loss link. So you can see here uh, in our gap, the level of safety on the left and the sensor capability between an arbitrary 0 and 1 on the right, where we lie at the dot um, on the um, vertical or on the uh, XY line. And this does not currently meet the target level of safety at the top or the green dotted line. In order to close the gap, sensor capabilities must be increased. And therefore, a, sa a safety analysis of sensor capabilities is needed to assure that sensors are capable of detecting the necessary amount of aircraft that allows the UAS to meet the target level of safety set forth by the FAA. Airspace is defined as the uh, space lying above the Earth or a certain area above land or water, especially the space lying above a nation coming under its jur jurisdiction. This is granted to the FAA by Title 49 of the United States Code. For the purposes of our project, we'll be operating in Class E airspace, which is a restricted version of airspace under 18,000 feet where the RQ-7B shadow uh, does operate, and not inside any um, airport, which is Class B, C, and D. The RQ-7B, produced by Ar Aircraft Armament Incorporated, or AII, provides near real-time reconnaissance surveillance, target acquisition, and force protection. Its mission is very low to the ground, between three and 5,000 feet. It's equipped with electro-optic infrared sensors, currently the POP 300 produced by Israel Aerospace Industries. To summarize this, we'll be operating in Class E airspace, an altitude of 3,000 feet above ground level, with the RQ-7B Shadow, a Group 4 UAS. It will be operating under a loss link with no communication with the ground control station pilot and consequently no communication with ATC. We will be operating the XY plane, so only the horizontal resolution will be considered and elevation is not a factor. Only the RQ-7B shadow and another aircraft will exist in the airspace at any time. No elevated terrain within the airspace. No weather disturbances while under lost link, such as clouds and thunderstorms. Our design alternatives are the POP-300 and its updated version, the POP-300D. Uh, the POP-300 has a horizontal resolution of 640 pixels, while the POP-300D has a horizontal resolution of 1605 pixels. Our design alternatives are for the POP-300, two POP-300s, POP 300D and two POP 300Ds, where the POP 300 and two POP 300s will have varying azimuths, while the POP 300D will have an azimuth of 180 degrees plus and minus the nose. Our method of analysis is loosely broken up into three parts our airspace simulation, the gas model of aircraft collisions, and our sensor performance models. Before we get into these more deeply, I'd like to point out three main facts SLS, ELS, and ALS. SLS stands for our simulated level of safety or the number of collisions per flight hour that we get out of our airspace simulation. The ELS, or expected level of safety, is used as a validation as the output from the gas model of aircraft collisions. Finally, the ALS, or actual level of safety, are the levels of safety for each of our design alternatives after the sensor performance model. Our airspace simulation uh, produced 10 million flight hours with an expected relative velocity of 120 nautical miles per hour and a small standard deviation. We saw 3,095 collisions, giving us a probability of collision, or SLS, of 3.03 .03 times 10 to the negative 4, far more collisions than needed for our 10 to the negative 7 level of safety. The gas model of aircraft collisions, which was derived from the gas model of particle collisions, is used as a validation. We wanted to see that the SLS is greater than the ELS, or that we simulated more collisions than is optimal in a nonsense and avoid situation makes a few assumptions shown here, performs a calculation based on the number of aircraft in the air, the average size of the aircraft, the expected relative velocity between any two aircraft, and the size of the airspace A. By performing this calculation, we found an ELS of 4.89 times 10 to the negative 5 collisions per flight hour. Since this is less than our simulated level of safety, we know we're on the conservative side of collisions and can perform our sensitivity analysis with confidence that if we do reach 10 to the negative 7, we're on the conservative estimate. Our sensor performance model is performed with a few steps that I'd like to step you through. First, we need to calculate the minimum time to perform a sense and avoid maneuver. The time total is comprised of the time to detect, time warn, and time to turn. Since time to detect is a detection which is done passively, we assume this to be negligible, and time warn is also assumed to be zero since we're operating under loss link. Therefore, our equation is time turn, shown below, where phi is the maximum bank angle. With a phi of 30 degrees, we found that to be 5.73 seconds. Next, assuming a minimum detection threshold of one pixel and knowing the G aircraft dimension as well as our field of view or two times the azimuth, the number of pixels at our disposal for each um, design alternative, we're able to find the detection range using the 
triangle on the right applying a simple tangent calculation. Using these, we ran each of the near midair collisions, or 57,000 found in our simulation, to see how many of those uh, near midair collisions, which may result in a collision or, may, or would have to be analyzed by the aircraft, could be detected by each sensor, by each sensor um, at any set resolution. So the number of NMAX detected for each divided by the total number of NMAX is the percent detected, and our actual level of safety is found by 1 minus this percent times the probability of collision, or SLS, of 3.03 .03 times 10 negative 4. Our design alternatives were analyzed, and we found that increasing our azimuth does increase the percent NMAX detected, but lowered the amount of time we have and the distance uh, likewise. Um, and therefore, we found that the actual level of safety was only acceptable for the POP 300D and two POP 300Ds, which reached target level of safety is of greater than 10 to the negative 7 at 8.51 times 10 to the negative 8 and 3.72 times 10 to the negative 8. The negligible difference between these with the double cost of the POP 300D makes our suggestion that the RQ7 be, be equipped with the POP 300D uh, to assist the FA in their goal to safely integrate the UAS into the national airspace because its expect actual level of safety was 8.51 times 10 to the negative 8. Or it should be equipped with any sensor with an equivalent azimuth rating of plus or minus 180 degrees or full field of view and a similar resolution.